Hi there, my name is Melissa Mortensen from Polkadotchair.com and today I am going to show you a really fun project that gives you the opportunity to repurpose some of the sweatshirts that you have around your house. Um, my kids played sports in high school and my oldest daughter played field hockey and I went when she graduated high school to make a t-shirt for her, like a t-shirt quilt, and I realized that all of her cutest items were sweatshirts. And I was like, well, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with the sweatshirts because we wanted to keep them, but she'd grown out of them, and it's just not like realistic to keep that many sweatshirts. So I got the idea to turn them into a sweatshirt blanket. So it's kind of like a sweatshirt quilt, um, like a t-shirt quilt, but with sweatshirts. And it's really fun because it is self-binding. You don't need to use any batting. Um, you just need 12 sweatshirts and two yards of sweatshirt fleece. And I'll go ahead and show you how to make it. before you get started is you need to cut up your sweatshirts. For this project, we're using 12 sweatshirts. Um, so there's 12 squares. So you can decide how you wanna break that up. If you only have six sweatshirts, you can use the front and the back of the sweatshirts if you want to. Or if you have 12 sweatshirts, you can use just the front. On some of my sweatshirts, um, there was things on the back that we wanted to use too. But just however you do it, your design, you want to make sure that there are 12 squares. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to take your sweatshirt like this, and what I am using is a 15 and a half inch ruler. And this is really nice because it keeps everything square. You don't have to take a lot of measurements. Um, it'll go really quickly if you get one of these. And I'll go ahead and make sure that I link up where I got this for you. So you've got the ruler. You're going to need a rotary cutter and some sharp scissors. So take your sweatshirt. The first thing I did was I took my ruler, this is a men's extra large, and I just made sure that all of my image would fit within the ruler, and this one does. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the ruler aside, and I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting. So what I like to do is just cut the side seam up because you're just pretty much going to separate the back from the front. And this doesn't have to be precise, you just need to get it apart. And then I'm going to cut the sleeve off. Make sure when you do this that you don't cut too close to the, to the edge. And also, if you have a sweatshirt with a raglan top, where raglan would be something like where the sleeve comes out to the shoulders, you want to make sure you don't cut the shoulder off because you might need some of this part of the sweatshirt to make your square. So go ahead and just cut it maybe halfway down the arm if that's the case. But this one's not a raglan style. So we're going to go ahead and cut it. You're not going to cut the neckline off. We're just kind of roughly chopping things up. And we want to separate the front from the back. So then all of this is extra, so we're just going to go ahead and set it aside. If you don't have enough squares, you can use the back if you want to, if you want just like a plain square. So now what you're going to do is take your sweatshirt on your cutting mat, and we're just going to lay it out like so. Okay, so here we've got this. Now, this ruler is really nice because there is a center line marked on it. So what you're going to do is you're going to come up as high as you can on the neck. Every sweatshirt is going to be a little different depending if you're dealing with like a teenager size sweatshirt. Um, if it's a kid size sweatshirt you're probably going to need to use a smaller ruler. But like I said this uh, size ruler worked well for me from adult size small to extra large with my sweatshirts. Okay get that on there. Use this ruler to kind of make sure, see I feel like that's a little off square. I'm going to go ahead and square that up. I'm going to line this up so everything looks centered. Okay, and then once you get it centered, 
you go ahead and cut it. Just leave the ruler in place. Since it's stretchy fabric, it is a little bit more forgiving than like a quilting cotton, but you do want to do your best to keep it perfectly square. Okay, so we've got that cut out. If you were making a t-shirt quilt, then you would want to add some sort of stabilizer to the back, but since the sweatshirts are a little heavier material to start with, we don't need to add any kind of stabilizer. So we're gonna go ahead and discard the scraps. And then I'm gonna go ahead and move the ruler aside because we don't need that right now. And you have got one of the squares for your sweatshirt. Okay, so what I did is I took my 12 squares and I cut them out and then you can lay it out. If you have a design wall, you can use that or you can just lay it out on your floor, get a design that you like for your squares. Your sweatshirt quilt, if you make it just like mine, is gonna have four rows of three squares each. So I've already sewn some of the rows, but I'm gonna go ahead and show sew the bottom row for you today. Okay, so what you're gonna do, just very simply, is you're gonna pin the sweatshirt pieces together right sides facing. So we're just gonna take this along this edge and pin these like this. And then on my sewing machine, I have a quarter inch foot on it. Um, I like to use a quarter inch seam allowance for this because I find that with all the bulk of the sweatshirts, you just don't want a lot of seam allowance. Um, the fabric is a little more stretchy than you're used to working with, so you do have a little more flexibility when it comes to seam allowance. So you're just gonna take these and take them over to your machine, just using a standard stitch, and I'm gonna come down. Now this, in this case, you do wanna go ahead and make sure that you backstitch um, because you wanna try your best to keep the seams as square as possible because it's gonna stretch as you go. So there, I'll show you. We have two of our squares sewn together and now we just need to go ahead and sew the third square to this row. see I have my row sewn. Now I do recommend that you lightly press this. Um, when you press you need to make sure you only press on the wrong side of the fabric though because this that's on the front of the sweatshirt is not heat resistant. So if you touch your iron to this it's going to melt and it's going to get all over your iron. So you do need to be careful with that. Okay so here we have our row and I know that this is my bottom row and I'll show you what I've got so far. I don't know how much of this you can see, but I've already got a few rows sewn. So I've got nine sewn together. So I'm just gonna show you how I attach this last row. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pin this. So I'm pinning the top of the bottom row to the bottom of the last row. And then I will show you a trick for pinning. You want to go ahead and make sure your seams are nested like this. So they're kind of folded to one side and one is, and they're right on top of each other. And that will help you get a, 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 like a more accurate seam there. Since you're working with sweatshirt material, there's just not enough body in the fabric for it to be perfect. So if you're somebody that has to have your quilting joints exactly right, you might have a hard time with this one. Just because the fabric is just really, it's not as stretchy as a t-shirt, but it's stretchy enough that it's gonna kind of give you a headache if you try that. So we're gonna go ahead and pin this. I always like to start by pinning my seams between my blocks first, and then go back and pin the in-between parts. So 
So now I'm just going to go through and just double check on the other side of the fabric that I didn't miss any spots. Or if there's a spot like this that it's like cut really close, you can see the seam. I don't know if you can see that because it's dark, is really close. I'm just going to go ahead and stitch over that a second time. So now you have got, I'll show you the best I can, you have got 12 pieces sewn together. Okay. Now what I'm going to go ahead and show you is I'm going to show you, I'm going to talk about the back. So this blanket is self-binding, which means you don't have to attach a binding. And it's also a blanket, not a quilt, because there is no batting on the inside. So what you need to do is you need another piece of sweatshirt fleece. Um, you can buy a sweatshirt fleece at most fabric stores. Um, you need a piece of fleece at least 60 inches wide. You can also use polar fleece if you wanted. I just thought that I wanted to use sweatshirt fleece for the whole thing. So what you're going to do, and I'm going to go ahead and tell you what I'm going to do, and then we'll take a break, and I'll come back when it's pinned. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to find on each of my pieces of fabric, on all four sides, I am going to find the center. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to put a pin, just like that. And then I'm going to go on the other side and find the center and then all four sides and then I'm going to do the same thing with this piece of fabric and then after I've got the centers of all four sides together I'm going to pin the pieces together starting at the center and working out. Okay I want to just really quickly explain to you how this is pinned. What I did is I found the center of both pieces. Your backing is 12 inches bigger than your front and I pinned from the center out to the edge, pinning the backing and the sweatshirts right sides facing, and then you're gonna stop pinning about half an inch to an inch from the corner. And you're gonna do that on all four sides. So you're gonna end up with these kind of like funny little like dog ears on the ends. Next, what we're gonna do, and I'll go ahead and do this and then check back in, is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna stitch a seam down all four sides I'm going to stop about this far from the edge. Okay, so what I've done is I have sewn the back to the front, and since the back is bigger, I've got this extra piece. On the bottom, I did not sew this, because I'm going to need this to turn this right side out. But you're probably like, what are we going to do with this weird thing? So what you're going to do is you are going to take the blanket and you are going to fold it diagonally across itself. And with smaller blankets, you can kind of do this all at once. With this bigger one, it might be a little more of a struggle to get it all at the same time, but you do kind of want to get all your layers nice and even. Okay, so we've got it like this. So you've got this, you've stopped sewing here and here. So we're just going to kind of fold this back. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to use, I'm going to use a piece of chalk. Um, you can use a ruler if you want. Depends on what color your fabric is. You might also need to use a marking pen. And you're just going to come from here to there and mark that. And then I'm going to go ahead and put a couple pins in it. Like so. And then I'm going to stitch from here to here along this diagonal edge. And you can see my I'm all lined up really nicely like that. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch that. I'll stitch all four sides, and then I'll go ahead and show you what to do next. Okay, so after you've sewn your front to your back, and you've left it open, and then you've gone ahead and made your mitered corners, before you cut anything, what you need to do is you need to come in and you need to make sure that you did it the right way because it's a little counterintuitive and honestly it took me a couple of times to do it right. So I'm just going to come in here, put my hand in here and turn this corner right side out and just kind of make sure that that's an actual miter corner and it is. I could stitch it a little bit closer in there just to kind of line it up a little bit better but for the most part I'm really happy with how that looks. So since I did that for all four corners what I'm going to do is take my scissors in here, 
and I'm gonna go ahead and cut the extra fabric off all four corners since I've gone in and I've double checked that everything's okay. So after you've got all those, what you're gonna do then is you're just going to <laughs> come in here and you're gonna turn it right side out through that hole that you left. very last thing you're gonna do, um, and I'll go ahead and make sure that I like show you a finished picture of this, but it's a really simple step and I can show you right here. So you've got, you're gonna, like I said, put it on the floor, make sure everything is laying the correct direction, you don't have like any big puckers, and then you're just gonna come in here and fold this under and put some pins in it, just like that. And then your very last step is you are going to top stitch. So you are just gonna come in here and you are going to top stitch right along the edge of this all the way around. And as you do that top stitch, you'll go ahead and you'll catch this seam. And then give it a little bit of a press and you're good to go.